The following content is provided under a Creative Commons license. Your support will help MIT OpenCourseWare continue to offer high-quality educational resources for free. To make a donation or view additional materials from hundreds of MIT courses, visit MIT OpenCourseWare at ocw.mit.edu. Now that we know all about how lasers work, we're ready to ask some very important questions. For example, what is the nature of laser light? Here's some questions. What is the wavelength? Is the light tunable in, in wavelength? Is the output or the spectrum of the output, is it single frequency? Is it multiple frequencies or what? Is the output collimated? Can it be collimated to a diffraction limit? Is it focusable to a small spot or a diffraction limited spot? Is the output polarized? How much power do we get out of the laser? Is it continuous power or, or pulse power? Now these are all very important questions and we should have answers for all these questions. Now we're going to illustrate as many of these properties as possible. The only problem is that I can't use the same laser to illustrate all these properties. I'd like to use a variety of lasers that we can lay our hands on to illustrate these properties. For example, we'll use helium neon lasers to illustrate some basic properties. Then we'll go on and use a tunable dye laser to, to uh, show how tunable some lasers uh, can be and so on. So first, we're going to start with a very simple property, which is, is the laser light polarized? So we're going to start with a helium neon laser over here with external mirrors. And the amplifier is a helium neon amplifier here in the, in the middle. So what I'll do first is turn it on, turn this laser on. And uh, here's the output from. Uh, from the, from the laser. I'm going to reflect it by this mirror, and then this mirror is the output here, and then the output goes onto, onto the screen. So let's now look at that spot on the output in, uh, in close-up, and then I will put a, a polarizer here in the way of the, of the light beam. And uh, and see whether indeed the light is, uh, is plane polarized. So what I'm going to do, here's the polarizer, and the arrow indicates that the transmission axis of the polarizer is along the vertical. Now if we see that when I'm along the vertical here, the spot has maximum intensity, but as I rotate the transmission axis of the polarizer, you see that the light gets, gets extinguished. Here I go back to vertical polarization, light has a maximum, and I go to, to the orthogonal position, and the light is extinguished. So all this says that, very simply, that the, the light from this laser is plain polarized. Simple as that. Now you may wonder, why is it plain polarized? Well, the answer is that in this particular laser, we have the mirrors mounted outside the discharge tube. And the discharge tube is terminated by windows that are placed at Brewster's angle. And you may recollect that at Brewster's angle, only certain polarizations have zero loss as they go through the windows. But the, the orthogonal polarization to that has a lot of loss and therefore will not laze because we don't have enough gain to make those uh, polarizations laze. So in this case, the, uh, it's the polarization in the vertical plane that actually suffers no loss as it goes through the Brewster windows because the way the tube is oriented. And that's why the output is plane polarized and plane polarized in, in the vertical plane. All right, let's now take a look at another helium neon laser, the one that we have over, over here. Let me just take this 
mirror mount out. And I'll turn this one off and turn the, this little one on. So here we are. Here's the output of, of this laser. And then again, just like before, we put it onto, onto the screen. Now, if we, if we look at it in close-up, as I put the polarizer here in the way, now we're ready to look at the polarization of the light coming out from, from this laser. Now you can see when the transmission axis is in the, in the vertical plane, we have a lot of light. Now as I rotate the transmission axis of the polarizer, I find small changes, but not, not a lot. And in fact, when I go to the orthogonal position, I find that I cannot extinguish, extinguish the, uh, the beam, the light. Here we go, back to vertical polarization, and now to horizontal polarization. And indeed, there's small changes, but, but not huge, like in the other laser, where we indeed extinguished all the light when we went to horizontal polarization. So the conclusion here is that for this laser with internal mirrors, the light is not plane polarized. Question is, what is the polarization of that light? Is it unpolarized? Is it circularly polarized? And what have you. And I want you to, to think about that. But the only difference then between this laser and the previous one is the fact that the previous one had external mirrors and Brewster windows. And this one here has no windows and the mirrors are, are just attached to the, to the discharge tube. Now, in the, in the next demonstration, we're going to look at the spectrum of laser light from, from the one with, with internal mirrors and the one from external mirrors. And we'll see what we can learn from that.